Welcome to the CVMSDC Virtual Capabilities Briefing, where MBEs introduce their products or services to potential customers. To register for a Virtual Capabilities Briefing, or VCB, you can email info at cvmsdc.org or visit the website at cvmsdc.org. And now, here's your host, Dominique Milton. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to invite each of you back to another VCB. Today, we have Ron Harvey, who is a PCC certified leadership coach, speaker, trainer, and facilitator. Ron is an energetic, engaging individual who believes his purpose is to make a difference by inspiring leaders to excel through learning, growth, and adding value to others. He is the vice president and chief operating officer of Global Core Strategies and Consulting, LLC. Ron serves on the executive committee for the Columbia Chamber. He is also serving on the board for South Carolina Fathers and Families. He is a past president of the Association of Talent Development Midlands chapter, and he serves on the com communities and school board. He's also a board member of CVMSDC, where he leads the Metro, I'm sorry, the MLP ring as the MBIC chair. As a leadership coach, he has been described as motivating and engaging. In partnership with the Columbia Chamber of Commerce, Columbia, South Carolina, Ron has collaborated with business leaders and government leaders at all levels. He has a specific passion and focus to add value and make a difference. Ron earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration and a Master's of Business Administration degree from Trident University. He also earned a Certificate in Leadership Coaching from Georgetown University and is a graduate of the, of the Adaptive Learning Program from Harvard University. Additionally, Ron is a certified coach with the John Maxwell team and the International Coaching Federation. So without further ado, Ron, come on down and join us for this VCB. We're excited to hear about your organization and how you help others to thrive and grow. Well, thank you, Dominique. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here with you. Um, this is phenomenal. So I look forward to, to being able to share about global core strategies and consulting. So thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome. I'm going to leave you and I'll be back for Q&A. It's your show. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Dominique. So Global Core Strategies and Consulting, um, we're a leadership development firm and we were established in 2013. Um, and our goal, as you look through it, is all about leadership developing and, and helping leaders in organizations. Our primary focus is to help leaders in organizations be super successful. And I'll talk more about that in the organization. Um, our services that we focus on is leadership and executive training, organizational development, cultural and behavioral change, and executive coaching. And I'll begin to share more on the next slide. So when you look at global course strategies and consulting, some of the things that are super important for us to understand is we help leaders, you know, with, with confidence and awareness, emotional intelligence, relationship building, that require, those are required skills to create a winning culture in organizations. Our company spends all of its time working on the culture of an organization. We firmly believe that if an organization is gonna be successful, culture drives that. And we're finding that out more and more now than ever before with us being in the pandemic. The culture is helping organizations survive. And we do that in, in several ways. And I'll speak to four of them today. Diversity, equity, and inclusion, better known as DE&I is becoming one of the primary focuses that we spend a lot of time in helping organizations understand how important diversity, equity, and inclusion is to profitability, the culture, and how long the organization is gonna be sustainable. We do that through the lens of the leadership. And so we do a lot of leadership development. So that's another core principle for us is how do we help develop leaders? So at the executive level, mid-level managers is where we spend a lot of our time helping organizations around leadership. The other thing that I spoke highly of is culture. Culture is how you behave. And so we all have vision and, and mission and values. Culture is how does the organization really behave on a day-to-day -day basis? And so we help organizations understand and figure out what culture they have. And if they don't know what that is, it automatically exists. And so we want them to be intentional about creating the culture that's gonna help them be sustainable, profitable, and scalable. What culture do you need to have in your organization to be successful? We The other component I'll speak to it's coaching. We spend a lot of our time as an organization, and we love doing it, is coaching people to be their best self, to be their authentic self, to understand what do they have to do internally 
you know, because leadership starts with you being a good leader and looking internal before you look external. So we spend a lot of our time helping our leaders through coaching. And we do one-on-one -on -one coaching, we do team coaching, we do group coaching, but coaching is becoming the new way of training, if you will, because experiential learning is becoming huge. And we do that through the lens of coaching. Um, and so I'll go into a little bit of background on the next slide about who I am and, and what I bring to the table. So co-founder, my wife and I started this company and I'm the co-founder uh, and Linda is the CEO of our organization, which I'm, I'm, I'm really, really super excited about is being in, in a, a, a marriage, but also us as husband and wife, being able to build a company that's serving the community. You know, so we look at the education as Dominique shared um, and you'll find out on our website is we knew that for us to be successful, it just talks a little bit about us. I will say, I'll, I'll jump down to the past experiences. What I bring to the table, what our company brings to the table first here is, is you know, I've been in the Army for 21 years and I've served as a coach in the Army, served in multiple roles and retired as a first sergeant. And I've always found myself in a coaching role, mentoring role, development role of how to make sure that we take care of people and develop people intentionally, but I also served as a senior trainer and facilitator in an adaptive leader program. And so when you think of adapting, most of us now have to adapt because the world has changed in front of us over the last 18 months. I um, also served in National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, which you know served as a diversity program manager to really start talking years ago about how do we become more diverse, more diversified in our organization. So the experiences that we bring to the table, we bring to your organization. And so I'll continue on in the next slide to talk a little bit more specifically about why Global Core. And when you think of why, why Global Core strategies? Why should someone consider us as, as the trusted partner? First, key word for us is we're trusted advisors. We're results driven. Um, we're respected for our expertise and leadership. We hone in and constantly we're lifelong learners around leadership. And, and that's important to us is because we wanna bring the latest and the greatest of what's happening in the space of leadership. We firmly believe leaders determine the level of success for the organization. Um, we help organizations create a winning culture and, 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 and we co-create that with you. So we don't walk out of an organization and say, hey, we have all the answers for you. No, you know your organization, um, you know your environment and you know where you wanna go at. So we kind of put a menu in front of you and we co-create with you together. We also have the proven ability to help organizations maximize the people side of their organization and people drive results. So how do you maximize that? How do you create a place where people want to see you be successful? And we have a proven strategy to help that. Our collaboration and, and adaptability allows us to design custom solutions. You know, so we're coming into organizations to meet you where you are, to understand where you are and begin to help you navigate to where you want to go. And that's super important for us is that we don't have an on the shelf product that fits an organization. So we don't copy and paste a cookie cutter approach. We're really going to roll up our sleeves and the greatest yield of return that we want you to get out of it is what works for you and your people and your organization. So we won't bring something from another organization. And so the next thing I would love to talk about on the next slide for us is, is why do our clients really work with us? And this is important for, for you to understand and for us to get right every single time. We really ask our clients, why do they work with us? And what we found out over the years is they love the idea that we co-create strategies that align behaviors with business results. We've also heard from that, you know, developing culturally competent leaders in a diver diverse workforce is another primary reason why our clients really you know, work with us on, on a continuous basis. Um, and they continue to, to do work with us over years. So a lot of our clients stay with us long term. Um, we co-create accountability measures. You know, if we want to get it done, we hold people accountable, but we co-create what that looks like um, to impact transformation in your organization. Um, we improve cross-cultural communication to increase diversity, equity, and inclusion. What we find in organizations is oftentimes they're, they're very silo-driven, so we want to ensure that we improve the cross-cultural communication because we all come from different walks and different backgrounds, and so we want to improve that across the organization. And what I'd like to cover with you on the next slide is what sets us, what sets us apart from other companies. We know that as, as, our, as a consumer, can, there are many choices for you to choose a leadership development firm, people that do coaching and consulting, um, that do training and development. There are tons of companies out there. Here's what we know that really helps us separate ourselves from our, our other companies that are out there. 
Um, I'll go back to the co-creating strategies to narrow the leadership gaps that are identified during the assessment. So we do an assessment and we begin to say, how do we co-create what works for you that we're good at that fits into your culture? So that separates us, the co-creation part of it. Um, we build authentic partnerships. So what we come alongside is we don't necessarily have clients. We totally believe in creating a partnership which allows us to close the gap faster and get real work done. Partnerships are key to us. And so when we come in, we don't want to look at if you win, we win. If you lose, we lose. This is a real partnership. So we're in it from the beginning. In our turning point leadership development program is the third thing what sets us apart, which provides leaders with what they need before they get into position. We want to make sure whoever you're identifying for succession planning is actually going to be, you know, come alongside your succession planning and strategies to develop these people before they get into a position. And then they don't have to build an airplane while it's in the air. So that those are the three things that I would share with you that really help set us apart from our competitors. And we're proud of these three things. The next thing that I would like to cover with you on the next slide is, you know, some of the top reasons our clients call us, you know, and so when you think about our clients, and the people that have an opportunity, why should you call us? And we'll talk more about that, you know, at the end as well. And I'll recap that is we help them build or reestablish trust in the organization. Uh, we help them move their people and their teams from conflict to collaboration. Uh, we help our clients also. We help them minimize silos in the workforce. And we help them improve diversity, equity, and inclusion, which is a driving force for 99% of our organizations now. Diversity is a bottom line result now. And you can, there's a business case for it and we're having more conversations. So, you know, these are the top four reasons that I'll share. Why do our clients really call us? Um, and so as I go to our next slide, I wanna talk about some things that are important to me to share with you um, about our core values. You know, we're really built on that. Um, our company um, values are defined as a company by our values. You know, our leaders are, are, are super important to us, but our individuals that are going to serve and come do the work in your organization, it matters how they show up and in, in their interaction with our partners. Collaboration. We're dedicated to working collaboratively with each and every one of you that decide to choose Global Core um, as an organization to support you. So respecting your intellectual ability and values and goals, we want to hear from you. So collaboration is huge for us. Trust and integrity. Um, that we're going to conduct all business honestly, openly, and ethically with you at all times. That's non-negotiable for us. You know, so if we know something is not going to go right, we tell you up front. If we know that something we don't understand, we're going to ask questions. But we're also going to protect your confidentiality and your privacy. And so we ask for permission before we say who we're working with. Um, it, it's not important that people know who we work with unless you give us permission to share that. And we will ask for that permission if we're doing great work. Um, leadership, um, one of the things that we are always doing is we know that our role, we got to model what we expect in your organization. So I do expect for everyone on our team to always be phenomenal at leadership. Um, and, and it's our responsibility to continue to take ownership of everything that happens that we do with your organization. So leadership is huge for us. Personal development, um, we continue to strive to, to improve ourselves through self-knowledge uh, uh, and awareness and academically and socially. So when we're in organizations and rooms, I do hold our team accountable for getting better themselves. It's hard for us to show up in an organization if we don't take time to get better. So our company is always striving to what's next. How do we need to grow? And I'll say that in all organizations right now, what's required in 2020 or 2021, it's going to be totally different in 2025. We're leaning into that, that direction already. What do we need to have to be prepared to be able to come alongside you as a partner in 2025. And it won't be what we're doing today. So we're always changing and we're always adapting and we're always adjusting. We embrace change. And so one of the things that I think is important is that organization at Global Core is always embracing change. So I'd like to pause there uh, and, and really be able to um, ask Dominique to come back in as we talk about you know, some of the things or the questions that we have for you. Excellent job, Ron. I love the fact that you call your customers partners as opposed to just customers and that you co-create um, and, and solve solutions together. So I, I love that. So I do have some questions for you, Ron. Um, talk to us about, because our, our, our listeners love stories. Talk to us about your favorite success story. 
Yeah, I was I'd say our favorite success story, um, and there are a lot of stories, Dominique, but one, probably the one that's most recent is probably one of my favorite right now, is we're working with a partner that's really doing a helping um minorities on black owned businesses navigate to be successful and scalable. And so we partner with one of our clients that has given us the opportunity to to reach outside of just where we're locally working and conducting daily business where we're covering probably just about every state in the United States to help entrepreneurs get it right, to help them get the education, to help them get the resources, to help them believe in themselves. And we're changing the landscape and changing the dynamic of families for years to come. And so that's probably the biggest. I mean, we're really making a huge impact with entrepreneurs. Um, and, and, and I love that. Our company loves that. Where people like me, you know where I started at years ago, are I'm in a better position to add value to people and help them take care of their families. Excellent, excellent. And from where you stand, when you talk about DE and I, talk about how important intentionality is and, and the difference that you've seen from organizations that intentionally engage you to make changes versus those that don't. Yeah, organizations that intentionally engage us, the work is a lot easier um, because they're at the table and they want to do it, not just because it's the right thing to do now, it's because they care about it. And a lot of people did it because it was the right thing and they didn't want the camera to show up and they got to do it on camera. When those organizations approach us, they're leaning and say, not only is this the right thing to do, it's the important thing to me. And so those organizations mindset is a little bit different versus someone is watching and I'm accountable and we have investors and, and our workforce is unhappy and people are frustrated and people are walking out. They're doing it from a, a place of, you know, fear base. When people approach us, they're not coming to us from a fear based you know, process. They're coming to us and say, hey, we don't have this right. We're self-aware of that, but we don't know how to fix it. Can Are you willing to partner with us and help us take this journey together, which makes it much more effective long term because yes. it's not just a let me check the box let me do it now while it's it's a hot issue these organizations are going to keep this around for the long term and not because it's a hot issue very good very good talk to us about the certification you certified with cvmsdc that's how we met how has that benefited your organization yeah and i will tell you know for our organization the benefit is networking the benefit is continuously to educate the ben the benefit is being around other people that are going through what you're going through, that you can have a, an environment or a network, if you will, that will help you figure it out, that will support you when you're trying to figure it out. And, and someone that's advocating for you in rooms that you're not in. And I tell people all the time, someone has to be, in our company, it's great for who I know, but it's more important for who knows me that will say my name in a room that I'm not in. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a whole mindset shift for us as an organization. You know, so when people, Referrals are important because it stops us from cold calling. Right. And so when 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 someone is advocating for us, I don't have to start from a cold call anymore. There's already credibility established. There's already some some dedication. There's already someone that spoke on our behalf as an advocate and a champion. So what does the certification does? There's a champion that's doing the things I don't have the time to do. And that does it much better than I do sometimes because they're constantly out front. And this is what they do every day. So certification has tremendously been an advocate for who we are as an organization mm -hmm. with some of these big companies that I don't have the collateral to speak to. Right. And I'm not offended by that, but there's someone that does it every day. And that's what, you know, certification, CBMSDC is doing it every day, advocating for black business, minority owned businesses that says, no, this is important and you got to get it right. And companies are are listening, probably a little faster than they listen to me doing it by myself. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So Ron, there, there are tons of companies like yours out there, right? Lots of mentors, lots of coaches, lots of leadership development companies out there. Talk to us, and you did in your presentation, but a little bit more about the value proposition that you stand on and how that has helped you to grow your company. Yeah, I think the, the important part is really for us as a company, Dominique, understanding where you make a difference for people. It's super important in our value proposition because you know, what I've learned about our clients, people don't buy what we do. They buy when they need us. And when I walk into an organization, I don't get caught up in trying to convince them of how important what we do is for them. I'm not trying to, like this train is on the track and I'm trying to go out there and, and rewire this train. No, I find out where the train stops are and fit into their, their cycle and make a difference for where they are. So I don't get caught up in what we do. I get caught up in where they are and what's happening with them. So our value proposition is super important. We meet our clients where they are and we begin to take a journey with them. I'm not trying to convince them how great our programs are. 
That's not my role at that time. My role is to understand where they are, what they need, and do we have something that fits in alignment with where they currently are as an organization. So DE&I was not, a year and a half ago, was not the primary focus of our organization, okay. but everybody's struggling with it right now. So I told our company, where do we fit into this, 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 this life cycle for them? This is important, then we make it important. So our value proposition is we focus on what's urgent for them and we fit into the life cycle. Excellent, excellent. So Ron, I was talking to a corporate member just last week and I said to him, have you considered core, you know, core technologies, not, not core, I'm calling you Jeff's company, but have you considered um, Ron, Ron's team? And he says, is that the husband and wife team? And I said, yes, yes, it is, right? And that's how he remembered you, right? <laughs> yeah. So talk to us about how, how is that, the two of you working together in the organization, how have you made that um, add to the value of what you're bringing to the table? Yeah, first, first, it lets people remember us. If they forget anything else, they remember the husband and wife team. And you got to have something that allows you to, to be distinct, if you will. Yes. And yes. so the husband and wife team does give us that distinction because there's not a lot of husband and wife teams that's doing what we do. So right. the one thing is that's a brand for us. That's an identity for us. And I love the fact that it is an identity. But what, what, how do we make it work? Is in, in our business, it's a business. And, and, and so for us, we know we both have roles, we both have responsibilities, we both have separate offices. And so we work from home, but we have separate offices. And so we respect what we're both supposed to do for the company, and we don't allow that to blend into our relationship. So we actually appreciate what each other do in the business, because Linda does something I totally don't do, and I need her to do that. But I also do something totally that she doesn't do, and she needs me to do that. And we hold each other accountable, but we also are very responsible to each other. So Excellent. if you're in business, it's how do you be responsible to the person that also is your, your partner in life? And we don't take that for granted and, and we don't take advantage of that. I'm ultimately going to do what's right because I care enough about the relationship professionally and personally. Excellent. And you have some books out, Ron? Yes, um, really working on my set on my second book, and and I won't yeah. put the title out there, but you know I do I do have the book of Leading Under Pressure, and that book mm -hmm. is really about for le today more than ever, like COVID, everybody back is against the wall, mm -hmm. and and how do you begin to lead when people back is you know is against the wall and people are frustrated, businesses are collapsing, people are looking for money, you know relationships are and companies are folding, and companies are trying to fail. pressure is real and it changes every decision. And most people that know Linda and I, people say, well, when do you get frustrated? I said, I really don't. I adjust and I adapt and I'm resilient. I'm going mm -hmm. to figure out a way that pressure happens, but I want to be resilient and show that when I'm in a company, we will figure it out. That doesn't mean I have all the answers, but I know there's an answer out there and I have enough relationships to find the answer. Outstanding. Well, I've known you for five years and your personality, you've been consistent, your demeanor is consistent. So folks, see that that is the truth. Talk to us about the name, Global Core Strategies, how you all came up with that name and, and what, it, what it represents. Oh, yeah. My, oh, my goodness. I mean, our company started from a place of I, I walked away from a six-figure job that was reloading, relocating to Kentucky, and I really didn't want to go. Um, but I knew I wanted to still do the work of impacting people and organizations. And I went home and, you know, shared with Linda I didn't want to move. And she, she was on board. She didn't want to move either. Um, and so we launched a company and we, we tossed around forever and I knew I wanted to be something global and I wanted to stick to the core values, the core things about an organization. And, and we really put the work, the, the company together as a global core solution, global core strategies. And, and the unique part about it, we're faith-based, you know, we're faith-based organization, Linda and I are faith. The, the part behind that for people that are listening is we totally stepped out on faith. Yeah. And what GCS stands for is God can supply. For ah. corporate America, it's global core strategies. And exactly. every day we wake up in corporate America, it's global core. But we know that if we just stay you know, committed and obedient and, and take care of people and don't chase money and don't chase all these things that we think, we'll be okay. We, and we have been. People have taken care of us. People have looked out for us. But we take care of people. I love that. We always need to know what's in the name because that was powerful. Thank you so much for that. VK, do we have any questions coming in from the field? Thank you, Dominique. I do want to remind our attendees that if you'd like to ask a question to Mr. Ron Harvey of Global Core Strategies, please use the Q&A feature on your Zoom dashboard to submit your questions or comments. And a question that had come in earlier is, um, how has the pandemic uh, changed how you do business and how you work with your clients? 
Yeah, phenomenal question. I will tell you that, you know, um, when when the pandemic first happened, you know, we we're probably just like everybody else where we were like, what do we do? Because we were client facing. We had to be face to face one on one. And, and what the pandemic helped us do is first it helped us change faster than we ever would have changed. It stopped us from, from procrastinating. Um, and, and because we were looking at online training and, and setting up a platform and virtual platform and we were kind of dragging our feet. Well, the pandemic said you don't have time to drag your feet anymore. Do it now. You don't have a choice or go out of business. So the pandemic made us do something that we were dragging our feet on. So it, it kind of lit a fire up under us. But the other thing the pandemic did for us was it allowed us to stop just focusing on our own zip code. Now, you know, we did a we did an analysis at the end of, of the end of the um, you know, 20, uh, 2020. And we realized that we were working in nine different states that we weren't working in before the pandemic. So the pandemic made us take off the borders and the boundaries, and we can do business anywhere in the world now. So we really are global. Thank you. The next question is, how do you decide when to hire and who to hire? Yeah, I will tell you that your, 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 your partners is what we call them in partnership, will tell you when you should hire and who you need to hire. And so for us as an organization, we pay attention to the needs of the people that we're serving and how soon do we need them? Now I will tell for us, we hire before we need people because we need to ramp them up. We need to onboard them. We need to make sure that they have our culture and our values and our belief system down. So for us, we hire before we need you so we can get you in, into our organization and understand that you fit into the culture. Who we hire is based on what our clients need, which will reflect what we need as well. So we go off of what our clients need. Thank you. And we have two similar questions. I'll just combine them. Uh, the first part of it is, could you talk about some of the mistakes that you made in business? And then the next part is, and what challenges are you facing now? Yeah, yeah. For, for us, you know, you know, some of the mistakes that we made in business initially is trying to do everything ourselves um, and not changing fast enough and letting our ego get in, in, in the way um, it, it was huge for us in business. But also something that gets in the way, you know, oftentimes for us as businesses is not really paying attention to what your client is asking for. You know, you have this thing that you're in love with that you develop and, and, and you, you're crazy about it. But the reality is, no matter how crazy you are about it, it has to be what your client needs. So what we did now is we, we do have a, a very, very nice menu of services. But we make sure that we let our clients order what they want and we don't force feed them anything. Our clients drive our business. Our clients actually tell us what business we're in. And, and, and that's important for you to understand, like, hey, here's what we see you for. Here's what we notice you for. Can you do this for us? So we get a lot of phone calls based on that. So be OK with your clients. You know, like when you go to a restaurant, no matter how good the macaroni and cheese is, if, if I want mashed potatoes and gravy, you should be serving mac you should be saving serving that mashed potatoes and gravy. So don't fall in love with, as, as they say back when I was growing up, don't drink your own Kool-Aid. Thank you. We had another question come in by uh, chat and it says, I'm currently running my business by myself. My husband will be retiring next year and will be joining me. The question is, what do you suggest in migrating him into an already created environment? Phenomenal question. Um, identical situation to ours. And the first thing I will make sure is find out where he fits best and what he wants to do. But let him be your husband first and then a business partner. And I had and, and that's important because sometimes we'll think our spouse should automatically be a business partner. Be really, really mindful. What role does this individual want to play and what are they really good at? So it's an easy transition. Um, and that's important because I'd rather for you to have a marriage than a business partner. Excellent advice. And I suggest, Karen, that you reach out to Ron one-to-one. Uh, -one. Um, Karen Johnson brought that question into the chat. So I appreciate that. Thank you, VK. So You're we're welcome. at the end of our hour. VK, was there anything else? No, nope, that's the last question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're at the end of our time together. I want to close by giving Ron um, closing time to, to answer the question. My favorite ending question, Ron, is when should a client call you? Yeah, I mean, there, there are three things that really you'll see in your organization that says this is the time to call global core strategies and consulting. If there's low trust or no trust in your organization, that's a perfect time to call us. And, and that's being eroded across our entire country right now. Trust is really, really low. So I think 90% of the companies can use our service right now, Dominique. Um, the other thing is when there are silos within an organization, 
where departments are, are, are working in, in isolation and they need to work with each other. So when there's silos in organizations, that's what we do really, really well. We bring teams back together. Um, we do a phenomenal job with that. And the other thing is, as we've seen in the workforce, there are a lot of people walking out of the workplace for a variety of reasons. So when you're having high turnover, that's another opportunity for you to call us and say, hey, we're having this high turnover. What can we do and how do we begin to get in front of that versus react to that? So those are top three reasons that we're getting called. And then the last thing I guess we'll say, if you're struggling with diversity, equity, and inclusion, please reach out to us. That's, that is driving a lot of decisions for your workforce right now, is they want to see themselves at the top in your organization. They want to see a CEO. They want to see a VP. And if they don't see anyone like them at the top, they're struggling with staying with your organization. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ron. And to our corporate partners, you've heard it here. To our MBEs, Ron can also help you with coaching and mentoring and helping your organizations to grow. So I'm so excited to have had this time today with you, Ron. Thank you so much. Um, give my regards to Linda. And for those who are listening, as we said up front, if you're interested in a VCB, please email us at info at cvmsdc.org. Please check out our calendar on our website, www.cvmsdc.org. Go to events and calendar and sign up for our free events. We have an event coming up in November, November 8th and 9th, which is our MBE Summit. I invite you all to attend that and hear from corporations about what they are purchasing as well as networking with each other. So I thank you all for joining us today. That is a wrap.